Sam, I heard you saw a film by made by a child, right? A sort of small boy made this. Yes, a baby made this. Um, little baby Xavier Dolan, the enfant terrible of cinema or whatever. He's got even more talent than Damien Chazelle. <laughs> Um, the he's, enfant terrible enfant. He's 27, which means that he's such a little baby boy. He's only just older than we are, and he's made six fucking films. Absolutely disgusting person. Yeah. His latest is "It's Only the End of the World." It is an adaptation of a play by the same name, which is about a guy called Lewis, and he's a young man. Well, he's youngish. He's much older than Xavier Dolan, little baby. He's 34, and he is returning home to his family to announce to them that he is dying. What? And uh, every member of his family is a very famous actor, including Marion Cotillard, Lea Seydoux, Vincent Cassel, and the main guy is played by Gaspar Ulliel, who um, is, uh, was Yves Saint Laurent in a recent biopic. Bunch of hotties. Total, everyone in this film is an absolute babe. Babe to the max. And it was directed by a babe. He is actually but, quite, yeah, he's babe age-wise, but he's a pretty good looking guy as well. Yeah. Um, here's a clip. Hello, I'm back. Uh, you missed me. I got a thing to say. Sit down, sit down. Uh, I say vous, I say vous. I'm dying. Uh, who cares? Who cares? Only the end of the world. Pass the, the taboule and the chips. Uh, uh, pass the lunch. I'll eat it and then I die. Who cares? Whatever. Goodbye. I'm flying back to France now. Yeah, so I didn't know really, know really anything about this movie before I went to see it. I just wanted, I was in the mood to see some sort of meaty film for film lovers that no one else was going to see, probably. And it's pretty good. It's not the easiest watch, but on reflection, I think I've enjoyed it more. It's based on a play which is quite experimental, apparently, and only in the first half follows a kind of, like, naturalistic structure. And in the second half of the play is a lot of monologues, and it, the sort of time scale of it becomes very unclear. And in this adaptation of it, it's been turned into, you know, more of a um, naturalistic kind of family drama. But it maintains a lot of, like, stylization that makes things slightly off and odd. Right. For example, people don't talk in a completely natural way. There is a sort of strange amount of, like, monologuing. And also the characters, especially Marion Cotillard's character, who's quite uncertain, is, like, constantly correcting her own grammar. Like, she will make, like, grammatical mistakes and correct them. Right. And as I was watching this, I was like are we supposed to understand that she's not actually French? But then I was only later when I like read about the play and I was like, oh, I see it's just part of the play that they do this. And it's some kind of way of evoking that these people have difficulty communicating. Uh, and also the time scale is like a bit odd. Like this lunch seems to go on for absolutely for ages and people are like constantly like recusing themselves and having long discussions in rooms or like going on drives and, uh, and stuff like that. Well, they're French, you know, they do what they want. They do what they Who want. Who cares? Lunch lasts 48 hours. I don't care. Yeah, it's it's like a tense family drama, uh, sort of awkward family meal type material that really zeroes in in a kind of laser-like way on the difficulties that humans have with communicating with each other. It's a bit like what you were saying about certain women where a lot of it is about what people don't say. But instead of that being expressed in silences, it's expressed in like chatter. Yeah. And it's also occasionally broken up with people very directly expressing their thoughts in like more private moments when they kind of open up. So it's a little hard to get a handle on in that way. There's no middle ground. We're either talking about nothing or the most important things. Yeah. That's actually kind of that's actually kind of true. Right. Um and uh, and those worlds kind of are very separate at the beginning of the movie and then like start to collide a bit later on. What makes it a bit hard to watch at the beginning is that it's shot basically either in close up or in like super close up. These actors must have been moisturizing a lot and getting fantastic makeup done prior to everyday shooting because, like, that you see a horrendous amount of detail. That's why they all have to be so incredibly good looking. Sure. Because you've got to see this face in, like, giant, like, Easter Island statue style, like, yeah. mega head. I um, mean, you look good in a mid shot, but if we zoomed in close, God. No, you'd see why I'm not, on, not in this movie. Yeah. If you zoomed in on my face. And it's a bit like before the movie has taken the time to establish the characters and invest you in the story it's a little bit like why are you doing this to me you know before you realize what they're talking about what their relationships are and like you get some hint of their histories because the, the it kind of plays its cards quite close to its chest and a lot of the things that exist between the characters and relationships are just sort of teased out over time but before it does that it's just a bit like i don't understand like why is there like a, you know a 30 second shot of just this guy's face is like while his eyebrow moves in slow motion and some like techno plays genius. you know Ge that sounds incredible yeah sounds like it's genius. a bit like well the thing is that the, the movie builds up enough drama that by the end that 
pr- approach that makes sense. Right, okay. And at the beginning, it feels a bit pretentious. So it's a film that kind of earns its own stylistic quirks, I think. Yeah. The performances are very strong, and I feel like there's such a forensic focus on the tiniest movements of people's faces that they really have to be. Yeah. Know? And there's a there's a extent to which I think that almost as well like what you're saying about certain women that like you're not sure how much it's just the audience is filling in the gaps because you can tell they're being left for you and how much is actually there. Yeah, it's like if you spend enough time looking at somebody's face, does do their thoughts just come out of it? You know, yeah, it's whether, like, whether they're know, doing anything or not. If a data source is large enough, you can find any code you want in it. It's sort of, yeah, it's yeah. a bit like that, like the numerology of uh, yeah. you're doing the Kabbalah with people's like, um, sure, like sure, movements I get that. of their lips and their eyes and stuff like that. And you're like, wow, this film is deep. But I think there is enough meat on the bones basically brought to justify it because like, you learn enough like actual tangible details about these people that in the second half of the film, there are genuine tensions that the scenes are exploring. And I think it does quite well in depicting the sort of contradictions or the difficulties of um this kind of prodigal son type scenario which is that he's been away for like 12 years and hasn't seen his family in this time and his uh his younger sister played by Leia Sidhu is like you know was a child when he left and stuff like that now she's um, a total hottie now she's a babe uh, so is she a bond girl well yeah <laughs> yeah exactly but about how they're all, they're really glad to see him and they're also very keen to please him because it's a bit like receiving a visit from a sort of beloved stranger right yeah yeah. you know if, if you're visited by a family member that you don't know you want to roll out the red carpet for them and so there's that element to it but they're also deeply resentful of him for having left them and there's the sense of abandonment and that creates interesting drama basically and they each kind of react to it in different ways and have different uh, responses to it and it's a kind of exploration of like the psychology of family relationships in a way with the tensions that exist in any family exploded by the length of time evolved that, that he was away i guess parents are often kind of you know might be much, like resentful of their children for not being in touch enough or whatever i definitely let this move and was like i gotta call my mom here <laughs> um my mail <laughs> so that? hello i'm dying hello hello mom i'm dying don't worry it's fine yeah and it's also like it plays with your expectations in quite a clever way like people suggest they're gonna do things and then it just never happens um you know when you're kind of taught to imagine that when things are set up like yeah, yeah. those things will then be followed through and you know um and things like that i i enjoyed it basically i can see how it would be a divisive movie because there's that element of the kind of filmmaking whiz kid who's got like a million and one ideas and uh i was listening to a bfi talk with him describing the movie and he was like talking about the color scheme and the, the sort of uh feeling of every scene and exactly what the atmosphere wanted to this child like doesn't understand cinema he just wants to impress me with his bag of tricks <laughs> well yeah i mean he he's a he's a very smart guy and he knows what he's doing and everything like that but like you, i can imagine how you could go in and sure, like come sure. away with ha- having that feeling a little bit um especially like a couple of scenes where you do feel like he's just like this play is sparse content 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 you gotta throw things in like random flashbacks that don't illuminate anything or like you know a crazy shot of a clock it's so exciting you know fuck um and he's kind of taken the exact opposite approach to Denzel Washington making fences where like Denzel Washington was like getting out of the way of the play entirely. And he's like getting up in its grill, rewriting it, <laughs> like uh, imposing his own um, uh, aesthetic on it completely. Uh, like there's more like techno music, I think, than that the playwright necessarily would have put into it. But yeah, I thought it was pretty good. It's basically cool seeing this all-star cast all hanging out and like acting their absolute socks off. I've seen so much acting lately, Danny. I've just... Oh my I've God. just I just can't okay? take. I gotta see a movie where nobody acts like fucking. I gotta see John Wick three immediately, like a zero <laughs> acting film. Yeah, um, and it's it's not excessively long. It's like ninety nine minutes long. Um, Sweet. It's kind of yeah. It's like a bit of like it's like a pop music video, but with like the intensity of some sort of what I imagine a Harold Pinter play is like. <laughs> cool. My favorite film stars Bridget Bardot. She's the queen, but she wants to be in radio. So she starts a podcast with her friends. And the terrorists try to stop her, but she beats them in 